Hey, Justin here with Stay Home Dads Podcast. Welcome to the show. Welcome to this place where I talk about the many different things that go on in my stay at home dad life. Things with my kids, my family, being a better father and a better husband, men's mental and physical wellness, parenting struggles I have, success stories as well. I also talk about parenting and life tips that I have, that I read about, that I just come across in my daily life. And lastly, random things that I think about that intrigue me, that uh, seem interesting, I come on here and I share with you. So I hope something in there you find entertaining, enlightening, maybe educational even, and uh, maybe it helps you be a better father and a parent as well. But anyways, thank you for tuning into the show today. All right, so no little chit chat today, none of that... uh, you know, ad lib and stuff. I just want to get right into the episode topic right off. It's food and our kids. So first, I'm going to tell some stories. I'm going to tell a childhood story of mine, kind of give you an idea of what was normal for us, for me and my siblings in our household. But I'm also going to bet that a lot of you 30 and 40 year olds will be able to relate with it as well. Then I'm going to give you a pretty good representation of what I think or where I think we are today with some comments I had with a few people on social media and kind of what I have seen with my own two eyes out and about with the dynamic with parents and their kids and and eating and snacks and, and all that other stuff. So that's kind of what I want to get into, the contrast, I guess, maybe give a few tips and uh, just make you kind of think about the choices that we make when it comes to giving into our kids, giving our kids certain things, uh, kind of that route. So that's where I'm going to go. We'll see if I get there. We'll see what happens. I just think that some of us, including myself, can do better. So that's that. All right. So my childhood and how my family worked when I was being raised with food and everything else. It was, it was expected and even normal to eat what was given to us at mealtimes. No frills, no supplementing, no making a second dinner, no subbing stuff out because someone didn't like something. Our family cooked one meal and, and that was it. And if you didn't like something, you just you sat there a little longer and you pushed through and uh, you finished what was given to you, right? I think a lot of people can relate with that. We were expected to finish our food. That was just the way it was. That's how I was raised. Even if we didn't really like it, that's uh, what we were expected to do. We were expected to eat it. To my knowledge, at least. Now, my mom could hear this and be like, hang on a second, but from what I can remember, that's kind of how it was. And it's not like we were eating terrible things or disgusting things. It was just normal Midwest cooking. You know what I mean? Just just average, you know, food. And it wasn't mean. It wasn't a punishment. It wasn't this, uh, you know, this bad thing where you're getting screamed at and berated to eat uh, something that you hated. It wasn't that. It was just, that was the expectation. And that was normal for me and my family. And And honestly, I think it was normal for a lot of people, and I think a a lot of you can relate with that. I actually remember this one time where I must have been 14 or 15. My stepdad was cooking my sister and I dinner that night. My mom was out of town, and he made this pasta with eggplant in it. Yeah, freaking eggplant, right? What kid loves eggplant? But anyways, me and my sister kind of looked at each other, and we were like, oh, okay, This eggplant, it doesn't look good, it doesn't taste good, but we knew that we were going to have to eat it. We need to eat our food. So we thought, we kind of came up with this game plan, like, okay, let's just crush the nasty eggplant first. Let's just get it out of the way, then we can enjoy our pasta or whatever else we had on our plates for dinner. You know, just get the terrible shit over with and then move on. So that's what we did. Well, after we're done with our terrible eggplant, my stepdad says, hey guys, the eggplant really tastes pretty terrible, so you guys don't have to eat that part. Son of a bitch, man. Damn it. You know, it just, that's the way we grew up. You know, we, uh, we didn't bitch and complain. We 
ate what was given to us. And uh, even if you didn't like it that much, he still said, you know, hey, eat your food. And that's what it is. And thinking about this, as I'm talking about it, it's almost Depression era ideals that today have kind of gone by the wayside anyways. If you think about it, our grandparents, say my grandma, she was born in, I think, 1933. She was definitely raised by people who went through the Depression. She was, you know, around when people didn't have a lot of stuff, right? No waste, eat, eat what's given to you. There's no complaining, you know, we don't have a lot to go around, that type of stuff. I even remember one of my other grandmas having pretty much a pantry that resembled a grocery store. Well, it was pretty much, her, it was her whole basement, so it was packed. She bought everything, and I think it was just kind of that mentality of, hey, well, it's on sale, I'm going to buy it, we'll use it type of, of thing. And we may not have the opportunity to get it later. So I think that's kind of some of that, you know, how people are raised, that Depression era mindset. Now, my parents are raised by people who were raised that way. So you kind of see the pattern here, right? So in a way, it gets carried on generationally, at least until now, where maybe it's my generation is like, oh, I don't want to do what my parents did. I don't want to feed my kids, you know stuff that they don't like or, you know, it's like they're trying to make up for what they had to endure, which if you ask me, I didn't endure anything. It was just my childhood. We ate what was fed to us and that's it. But now today's generation, today's children, including my own to an extent, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't do that. If they don't like it, they'll throw their food on the floor. Not my kids. My kids have never done that, but yeah, kids, you know, they don't like it, they'll push it away, they'll they'll refuse it, they'll throw a fit, they'll whatever, because I think they know that, well, mom and dad aren't going to make me eat these things, you know what I mean? So now, you kind of have that little backstory of my childhood, I guess, and, and a lot of our childhoods. Now hear this recent turn of events. I was on my stay-at-home dad's Instagram page, and I came across this post and it was stated, it was a picture with just text on it. It said, no cookie unless you have five bites of chicken. And then the next one said, okay, no cookie unless you have three bites of chicken. And then the last one said, okay, I'll give you an entire sleeve of cookies if you just lick your chicken. And I know it was a joke. I mean, sure, it made me laugh, but I had to comment. I, just, I had to. I guess I'm pretty opinionated when it comes to kids eating and uh, weak-minded parents, I guess, and parents not caving, like, you know, well, you get the idea. So I responded with, I know this is a joke, but please don't cave. Stop the daily overabundance of snacks. Cookies shouldn't even be an option if a kid's not eating their dinner. That's, that's all I said. I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was pretty uh, solid advice. Well, I get some responses. Not very many responses, but I get a few responses. First one says, parent however you choose to. Then they say, there, I fixed it for you. I'm like, okay, whatever. Another one said, cookies are an option in the real world, though, and I'm trying to prepare my kid for the real world. If I can teach my kid that cookies need to be earned and eaten in moderation, then I've succeeded. Or we just restrict things like my parents did and then go hog wild when I turn 16 dot, 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 to each their own. Okay, solid. Another one says, and what if you have a kid that won't eat snacks, doesn't eat cookies, just won't eat anything he doesn't like, and doesn't understand trying new foods with developmental delays that cause sensory issues? Then the answer is just don't eat for days on end. I did not have a response to that one. I'm, I'm not a food therapist. I'm not a doctor. You guys know this. I don't I don't understand. I don't deal with developmental delays in children. So I didn't really, uh, you know, go near that one at all. So anyways, apparently people hated my comment. They didn't like the idea of not giving in to their kids with shitty food. And I just think this goes to show the shift that I mentioned from what I grew up with to this, what we call normal behavior today. 
parents don't really want to roadblock, you know, their kids or deny their kids. Even reading through the comments on the rest of this post, a lot of people seem to be able to relate with it. Like, that's what they deal with on a regular basis of, oh, yeah, preach. Yeah, I know how that it goes. I know how this is. Oh, my kid does this and that and, and yada, yada. And yeah, I get it. It's hard. But I also think people today, they don't really want to upset their kids. They don't want to put up the fight. I think they would rather take the easy path and just give in to them because they don't have the energy to push an issue that's easily supplemented with snacks and junk and cooking second dinners and all that. Just the battle isn't worth it. And I get it. I've been there too. I remember times with my oldest daughter, Olivia, when she was, when she was, I don't know, one and a half and two years old, trying to get her to eat anything. I remember she ate a lot of bologna and a lot of hot dogs, a lot. Oh, and noodles. Noodles. Yeah. That was up like 300% in my house, butter noodles, like Jesus. And then we would try other meats and we would give her other meats, chicken and things, and she wouldn't want to eat it. And uh, then I started uh, calling certain things giant hot dogs and different kinds of noodles. It was a pork tenderloin. I called it a giant hot dog. It kind of looks like a giant hot dog, right? And that's kind of where we started with this to get her to eat more, kind of, I mean... She's two. You trick her, right? That's just what you do. And then we started adding in other foods. And, you know, she got better. She came around. I mean, she's nine now, so it's uh, not really a, a big deal. So I do like the one person's comment, though, about preparing kids for the real world. The idea of banning things, anything from food to certain activities to who kids hang out with can, I think, really backfire. And I do agree that cookies and treats and other things are something that should be should be regulated. They shouldn't be just cut off completely and acted like they don't exist. Kids should be comfortable having those things around and not having this immediate need to devour it whenever they see them, right? Like have cookies in the pantry, have sweet rolls out on the counter. There's been two chocolate chip cookies on my counter for a week now and my kids, they don't even care. They're just sitting there. I eat them. I'll eat them with my coffee. They're amazing. My wife baked them. But my kids are just like, yeah, whatever. So there is that, that idea that they need to be comfortable with this stuff just being around. It's not this elusive treat that they never get to have. I also told that commenter that if kids aren't eating their dinner, yet they had three or four snacks since they got out of school then I think you found your issue for them not eating at mealtimes. It's pretty simple to see, in my opinion, that, hey, if your kid doesn't eat at 5.30 for dinner, then maybe don't give them pretzels and cookies and uh, two bananas at 3 o'clock when they got off the bus. And then when they get off the bus the next day, which I have done, I've literally just done this, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, my younger daughter was like, hey, I want, some, I want a snack, and I said, no, She's six. I said, no, you don't eat your dinner. And sorry, that's it. And, you know, she fussed for a minute and then she got over it and she moved on. And you know what? She she ate her dinner. So there is a method to my madness, I guess. And yes, parent however you choose, of course. Like, I'm not going to preach here. Well, I'm probably going to preach a little bit, but I am a nobody. I'm just a guy. So don't listen to me. It doesn't matter. Parent however you want. But just look at what some of your choices may lead to down the road at two, at five, at ten years later, right? I don't really like the excuse, and that's what I'll call it, is an excuse of parents saying, well, that's all my kid will eat, and they won't eat a meal. They only eat Skittles or brownies or whatever, or they only eat this. Fill in the blank with whatever you want. And yeah, I've heard that statement with my own two ears. Parents pleading with their kids to eat a hamburger or a hot dog saying, okay, you can have these Skittles or this brownie, but then you have to eat your real food. It's just insanity to me. Like what, what logical thinking are you using? You're not. And it's gone even further. I've watched these scenarios play out 
watching these little kids just eat two or three desserts and the parents saying, okay, now you can eat your food. Now you can do this. And they'll take, uh, you know, take two more bites of your hot dog and then you can have another brownie. And it's just, what? Seriously? And I get it. Actually, no, I don't get it. But I know what the parents are trying to do. They want to go hang out with their friends. They want to go enjoy the barbecue. They want to do this. They don't want to deal with their kid, you know, and forcing them to eat a hamburger. They want to they want to go watch the game. They want to go have fun. They don't want to babysit their kid and parent their kid to eat their dinner or eat their lunch. So they they give in and they say, fine, whatever, I don't care. And now the kid's eating three brownies and a bag of Skittles and they've licked a hot dog. So great, great. It's great nutrition. It's perfect. <sighs> I don't know. I know. See, I'm, I'm just, it bothers me. It does. And I've seen this play out at my kids' local recreation building as well, where they, they do gymnastics and they do dances and do, they do everything else. And it just makes me ask myself, what the hell? It's 4 to 5 p.m. Kids and parents are everywhere while other kids are doing sports and doing their thing. And it's just these nasty little brats just demanding junk out of the vending machine. Demanding. It's like, kid, it's almost dinner time. It's 5 p.m. What are you doing? And parent, why are you giving into this? These kids will just be crying and screaming and yelling for money or throwing a tantrum on the floor in order to get money for this stupid machine. And like I said, a lot of parents just give into it. It's just, I don't... I don't understand. This has been bothering me for a long time. You can probably tell I've seen it on a weekly basis, and it's frustrating to watch. Like I said, the parents don't want the battle, or they just want the kid to shut up. I think that's what it is, too, mainly. They just want the kid to shut up, get them to be quiet, so they can get on with whatever they're doing. Now you may be telling yourself, man, Justin, you're being pretty judgy. Yeah, I guess I am. I guess... I'm being pretty judgy, but I don't really care because it's pretty insane. It's just, I don't know. And I think what really bothers me too is then these same parents that are wondering, oh, why my kids won't eat their dinner or they won't eat their vegetables or they won't eat better food. Why are they acting like little assholes, right? Well, you fed them two pouches of goo and a bag of of Cheez-Its or Cheetos or whatever and... Now you're wondering, well, look at what you just did. And I'm not even getting into what some of these foods do to your brain and do to your body, the sugars and and all the other BS that's in them and what you're giving your kids and, and how it's changing them in that aspect. I haven't even gotten into that and I won't today, but there's that whole other category on this as well. So what do we do here? What do all my bullshit stories mean? What's the point, right? Well, I guess I just want to help us do better. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, I want to give some advice on changing our kids' relationship with food to prevent them from being little self-entitled brats that get whatever they want whenever they want it. I think we could put our foot down, parents. I think we can. And I want us to maybe create a little dialogue with each other, with our kids on getting them to eat a little healthier and have parents just make better choices. Can I do that? I don't know. Can I change your mind? Can I coax you to take the path that may be a little more difficult? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. And like I said, I do agree. Parent how you want. Make your own choices. We all do and we all struggle. I've struggled myself with feeding my kids. I'm not going to sit here and brag like I'm on top of this hill And my kids are these little angels that clear their plates and uh, eat whatever I tell them to eat. And they do what's expected of them and all that. They're not going to do what I did as a kid, what was normal for me. And I, I try, I do, and they're pretty good about it. But I have those battles as well. Even today, my one daughter, she eats vegetables like crazy. She loves them. Now my other daughter... She would leave them on her plate until they shriveled up and turned to dust, like, gone. She wouldn't care. She would just let them sit there until they got cold as ice and and say she's full or doesn't want them or whatever. So, yeah, I I deal too, okay? 
All right, so let's get into some tips and some other stuff here, and then we'll uh, get the hell out of here. All right, first tip is pretty standard, and I say it about a lot of different things, and that's lead by example. Kids are little ass copycats, right? They typically do what we do. So if they see us eating, enjoying, or even just trying new food, I think they're going to be more apt to do the same. Hell, even fake it. Even act like you're trying a new food or act like you have never tried this and get your kids to talk you up, to cheer you on, to uh, try to get you to try this new food. I think that will, in turn, change how they try new foods on their own. Tip number two, I've heard it takes quite a few times of trying and tasting new foods for kids to essentially get on board with them, right? So this is going to be something that you try six, eight, ten times before they start to like it. Just keep being consistent and keep trying and don't give up. It's going to be a super slow process and you don't want to overload them with trying a bunch of new foods at one time, right? Just try one new food repeatedly over and over and over again. Here's an example for you. My oldest daughter hated eggs. She would not eat eggs. Scrambled, cooked, whatever. She wouldn't eat them. But what did we do? We kept at it. We kept offering and offering and offering scrambled eggs for breakfast in the morning. Cook her one egg. And then she kind of started to come around to them, started to like them. Now, for the past solid few years, that's all she wants at breakfast time. So I'll cook her two eggs in the morning, and uh, she's off to the races. So it does pay off if you just stay consistent. Don't just try one time and be like, oh, my kid hates this, and then you move on from it. And sometimes they may be like, oh, it's not that good, it's not that great, but that doesn't mean they hate it. Just keep it going in their life. I know, easier said than done. I get it, I understand, but you got to try All right, tip number three, try to make this whole process fun. Try to make it enjoyable, make mealtimes enjoyable. Like I said, fake trying new foods yourself. Kids will probably think that's pretty funny. Use reverse psychology. I bet you won't try that. I bet you can't eat that. You know what I mean? Kids fall for that all the time. I even got my daughter to try a Brussels sprout one night. And I didn't force it upon her but I made it kind of a fun thing. And I was like, come on, I bet you won't try that. And you know what? She tried it. And she actually was like, hey, this is pretty mild. It's not that bad. Kind of tastes like broccoli. And I was like, boom, there you go. Does she love them? No, of course not. But she tried it. She said it was okay. We move on. I even got her to try sriracha sauce. I was like, hey, you want something spicy? My kids hate spicy stuff. Tried some sriracha sauce and she freaked out. But we were having fun. We were laughing about it. She put it on her finger. She ate it. And uh, she was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. And she was laughing, though, and having a good time. Also, while trying new foods. So it's kind of a win-win. Made for an exciting night at the dinner table. But really try and keep the atmosphere positive, not grinding on your kids, not yelling at your kids, not beating them into some sort of submission, verbally, not physically, of course. Have a, have a new food Friday or something kind of catchy and fun, you know? Maybe, maybe that'll entice them a little bit. All right, tip number four. Keep a lot of what you want your kids to eat on hand. Sounds pretty easy. Sounds pretty simple. But if you want to change the direction of what they're eating, then maybe supply more of the stuff you want them to actually eat and limit the crackers and the cookies and the, and the uh, quote-unquote health bars and granola bars and whatever other shit that you don't want them to eat, phase that out and bring in more stuff that you do want them to eat. Whether this be at meal times or snacks, if you want your kids to eat healthy and make better choices, the least we could do is have those things around. Make fruits and make vegetables part of every meal or snack time. My kids eat fruit every morning. I make those eggs, I do some fruit. My other daughter eats yogurt, we do some fruit. Throw in the occasional pancake, throw in the occasional uh, egg waffle, which, you know, I'm not super excited about, but they're not that bad. And uh, it makes for a pretty well-rounded breakfast. If your kid's eating a Nutrigrain bar and a Sunny D for breakfast every morning as they run out the door to school to get on the bus, how can you expect them to eat eggs and, like I said, pancakes and fruit and all that stuff when it's on a weekend or when you have more time? 
Can you expect them to do that when they're solidly used to shoveling in a, a Nutrigrain bar, a, a breakfast bar, and a, an OJ? Like, that's what they're going to be used to. That's going to be where their bar's at. And they're not going to want to deviate from that. They're just going to keep eating that same crappy food. And they're not going to want to try that other stuff. And honestly, if you don't have time to make a breakfast for your kids in the morning, some of you aren't going to like this, but wake up 10 minutes earlier. Wake up five minutes earlier and fire off the uh, the, the eggs on the, the stovetop and, and make a decent breakfast. It's It doesn't take but five or 10 minutes to do that. Also, what goes along with this is if they want a snack and you want to give them options, tell them. You know, you have all that new stuff. You have that stuff you want them to eat on hand. Then say, hey, you can pick any snack you want as long as it comes from the fridge, not the pantry, okay? So then they could grab anything from yogurt or cucumbers or carrots, you know, fruit, so on. Like a lot of good, solid options. Those are all going to be much better than cookies, crackers, and all that processed, preserved food that comes out of your pantry. And that goes for us adults too. If you're trying to be better and lose some weight and you have a hankering, go to the fridge, not the pantry, okay? Simple tip. Number five, I've noticed my non-vegetable loving daughter, she tends to eat them much better when it's not necessarily quote-unquote dinner time, if that makes sense. So if your kids are hungry for a snack, say it's pretty close to dinner, then let them munch on their veggies or whatever food you want them to eat before dinner even starts. Maybe while she's watching TV, you're playing a game or doing their homework. Hey, Kennedy, here's some cucumbers for your quote-unquote snack, right? And then she's going to be happy that she's getting a snack, and I'm going to be happy because she's essentially just eating her vegetables 10 or 15 minutes before dinner. Not really a big deal, is it? Now we just knock that out. Two birds, one stone, you know? She's happy, I'm happy, and we can move on, and we don't have to sit there and hound her saying, hey, eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, because she's already eating them. It's great. Also, if you have a practice and you want your kids to avoid that snack vending machine, pack your own snack. Be in control of what snacks are had by your kids. Bring those healthy things with you that you want them to eat. Don't give them the options. And be like, oh, I want something out of the snack machine. Be like, hey, boom, boom, got this. Whip something out of your pocket. With that, though, I would say don't just spring it on them either. Let them know. Be like, hey, we're bringing around snacks to, uh, to practice today. That actually might get them amped up, actually, now that I say that. They might actually get excited. Vegetables, fruits, apples, whatever. Even nuts and seeds, you know? I could go on and on. Anything that I just mentioned is better than what's in that machine. I mean, I go through bananas and cutie oranges like no other. It's crazy in my house. That's what my kids like. They like it for snacks. All right, a few other easy tips I would say would involve your kids in meal prep time and cooking. Let them slow you down. I know it takes more time when you involve your kid in cooking and doing stuff, but that's good. It slows you down, right? Let them be the chef a little bit. Let them taste test. Let them have some fun. Set regular meal and snack times. Pretty easy, right? Also have those family meals around a table. I've said this before. I really think it's a great habit to be into And uh, you get to sit around as a family and talk about your day and not just focus on the food. You're focused on the company as well. Maybe that'll help your kids eat a little bit better. Also, talk about the importance of food and what it does with your kids. I know this is probably more applicable to older kids, but tell them about proteins and fats and carbs and and let them know what those mean and, and how they interact with the body and stuff like that. Just educate them a little bit. Just... Something else for you to do. And the last tip I'm going to give here, and I've read it on a few pages and I've said it myself, and that's just be patient. Encourage them to venture out of their normal comfort zone, but don't make it this big battle. This article I found on kidshealth.org says, don't force them to clear their plates and don't reward and bribe them with desserts and don't use food to show love. Even though... Even though I love a cleared plate, I do. I love a cleared plate. It's like this indication in my brain that that person is satisfied. Maybe that's super American of me, but that's that's how I think of it. Like, oh, you ate all your food? You're satisfied? You enjoyed it? You ate everything, right? I just, uh, I don't know. That's just how I think of that. Probably because of my upbringing, right? That's probably what it is. But I guess it's not an ideal practice, but... 
Anyways, I enjoy giving my kids desserts as well, but we never use them to bribe into finishing their food. Well, hmm. Maybe I kind of do. Maybe that's not totally true. Maybe I kind of use it as a bribing tool. I know I've done it a few times, but I kind of word it differently. Maybe. Let me know what you think. I word it like, hey, once you're done with your dinner, then uh, let's go get a let's go get a popsicle or something else. Let's go do that. Is that bribing? Maybe. I don't know. You let me know. But the bottom line is, is we all know our kids. We know that we want them to eat. We know we want them to eat healthy and nutritious things. We know what they should eat. And we also know what they absolutely hate, right? My daughter hates potatoes. We've tried and tried and tried. Different variations and different styles. And she hates them. She doesn't eat them. And part of me, I guess, just has to accept that, hey, she doesn't like mashed potatoes. She doesn't like these potatoes. Just accept it and move on. And uh, mark that up as, hey, Olivia doesn't like potatoes. I guess that's it, right? And while I also agree with the statement that your kid won't starve themselves, yes, that may be true. We hear this statement all the time. Well, your kid's not going to starve themselves. Just don't give in. I get it. It's easy to say. I've said it myself. It's easy to say about somebody else's kid. But try to say it to your own kid. It's kind of tough, isn't it? It's kind of tough to look at them and be like, fine, don't eat. And then you just think like, oh, man, this, you know, pulls on your your, uh, ethical heartstrings, I guess, that you're not being a good parent. You're starving your kid. So it's hard, I know. But honestly, kids won't starve themselves. They won't. So see, it's easy for me to say to your kid but hard for me to say to mine. So, there it is. It's a lot of my thoughts on this uh, sensitive subject, I guess. Honestly, take my tips with a grain of salt. I don't care if you do or if you don't. But just think about these stories. Think about what I told you. And think about where you lie in there. Are you kind of old school? Are you new school? Are you a hardliner? Like what I grew up with, which... Like I said, it wasn't a hardliner when I was living it. It was fine. It was my childhood. Or are you one of those parents who gives in to your kid whenever they want any type of food? Would you rather make them happy than fight with them? You know, where do you lie? So, I don't know. Just think about where you are and where you want to be and just let this conversation kind of get your gears turning and uh, provoke a thought, I guess. So... All right, that's all I have for this episode of Stay Home Dad's Podcast. Like I said, take it how you will. I hope I gave you some decent insights and tips on this subject, which I would think a little bit sensitive subject because parents never like it when other parents tell them how to raise their kids. But I also wanted to get into the benefits, but uh, that'll have to wait till uh, a later date because I'm kind of running along on my time here. And also, I'm going to do a show here in the next few weeks about foods that we should definitely stop giving our kids. I've done a lot of reading and I've seen a lot of posts on social media about all these foods that are just big factory made, you know, bleached out grains and flours and then they add in the nutrition and dye the color, you know, all that stuff, that scary stuff. Let's uh, talk about that here in the next few weeks and maybe we can shift our focus there as well. But if you have any questions or comments for me, please reach out to me on podbean.com or Instagram at stayhomedads underscore podcast and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to you all in a couple of weeks. Bye.